What is up guys? Thanks for joining another episode of Cars, Bikes, and Coffee. I am Kurt and we are working on a 1973 Datsun 240Z. We found a problem. Let me explain. So the problem is this guy, this master cylinder. If we go down inside this engine, we will see that the two feed lines go down into the distribution valve. So let's go down and I'll show you what's happening. So we can see that the brake fluid has gotten onto the paint and of course it's taken it away. So we'll have to repaint this. But looking at the hoses, Coming down from these two guys, you can see these are wet, this one's wet, and so is this. So since we have actually the updated, uh, the 280Z 7 8 master cylinder, we're going to go ahead and try to rebuild it. So we have the kit for that. And since we're going to have to repaint the frame rail down below, we'll take out the uh, distribution valve and the lines, uh, especially the line going to the uh, driver's side front brake and of course the two carburetors. Now, since those are out, it's a good time to rebuild those. I didn't do that in the original build, so let's take care of that. So let's start getting these carbs out and go from there. Now that we have the carbs out, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and disconnect this brake line that goes to the driver's side front uh, hub. We'll disconnect there and then also at this valve right here, these two, and then that way we'll be able to unbolt the distribution valve and the master cylinder. Uh, before we do all that, we'll want to drain uh, most of this brake fluid, especially out of the reservoirs. So that way we don't uh, ruin the sidewalls that, that are okay um, and minimize the amount of painting we have to do. All right, now we've got the master cylinder and the distribution valve out. We're gonna go ahead and remove the lines and just split these two so that way we have two parts to take a look at. So we'll do that right now. So now we've put the master cylinder in our vise carefully, not too tight and with a rag, and we're gonna go ahead and undo these bolts and this bolt right here. Now that we have these loose and these bolts loose as well, what we wanna do is go ahead and take this all apart. We do need to replace the uh, copper gaskets, so we'll want to get those sized so we can go to the auto parts store and get them. We do have the seal kit from Z Car Depot to rebuild the master cylinder. So let's go ahead and get these all torn apart, and we'll also take apart the internals of the master cylinder. And one piece of advice before you go taking apart all of these things, make sure you take a picture. So now that we have the master cylinder taken apart, we want to go ahead and take this shaft piece apart and obviously clean all of these, but also find all of the rubber seals that we're going to replace. All right, so we've cleaned up most of the parts and now we're just finishing up and we want to take these check valve pieces out of their gaskets and clean those up. Clean up the master cylinder. There's a lot of gunk. Clean out the filters. 
can see if you pull those out, it's got gunk in there. So we want it all nice and clean, and then we'll be ready for assembly. Now that we have our master cylinder and as well our distribution valve or brake switch, now that those are clean, what we really want to do is replace the copper washer uh, gaskets. Um, those are crucial because you know, they're soft metal, so when you tighten the bolts, they conform to the bolt and the surface that they're applied to. So in this case, these are really hard to find. If you know where to find these, leave them in the comments below. But what we're going to do is just a resurface. Um, and I have some 240 grit, and we're going to just do circle patterns on both sides and just reuse these in this case, but strongly suggest replacing with new ones. And the end result should look like this. We would want all nice and flat surfaces so that way they can be recrushed again and no leaks. So now we'll go ahead and start assembly. So because of the master cylinder, we're going to need to use the vise. We'll start with the bottom and then work our way around uh, and work on the shaft. And what we need for these are these two gaskets here that have the small center hole and then these the check valves with the tiny holes in them and they just slide right in make sure that they fit in that lip all right so we're going to put in the check valves and we need our two springs so we're going to put those into the bottom and we're gonna take our check valves with our new seals, push them in. Then we're gonna take our copper crush washers and our bolts. And just put these on finger tight. Then we're going to save this set screw with its copper crush washer for when we put in the shaft. So the first thing before we start assembling the shaft is to just kind of discuss this uh, rebuild kit. It came with this seal which is basically a double of these two which does not fit uh, within you know any of the shaft and so basically we need these three and these little cup ones that have little indents on the sides. So these are actually okay. I'm going to go ahead and use them, but I would definitely just advise that this larger one is not used. To start with, we do have the two pieces of the shaft. This is the one that sits where the uh, brake booster is and this is at the end of the master cylinder and so what we need to do is we need to add two of these seals and then one of these indented seals on this side and you'll notice that they are cupped and that cupped for this one sits like this the other one sits like that so we'll first do this one. Now that we have these two seals on, we're going to go ahead and work on the front. And first, we need these really thin washers, so we'll put that on. Then we take our seal that has the indents, and the cup is going to face outwards. Slide on like that. Then we take our concave washer, and that's going to sit as the bowl, so to speak, sits into the seal. And then we take our shorter spring and 
place that on the end. That piece is done. And now for the last shaft, what we're going to do, we're going to take that new seal and put that lip going away from the back. So if you can see how it has this lip that's flat on this side, I'm going to put that just like that. And in similar fashion to the other shaft, we're going to take that thin washer, put that on, and then take our rubber seal that has the indents, take our concave washer, place the bowl towards the seal, and then take our long spring and force that on until it clicks. Essentially, it will go in such as this. So now what we will do is place this in, place our last shaft in, and then you take your washer and your lock pin, just make sure that those pins are locked. That is in. And now we can go ahead and put in our bleed valves. And then finally our set screw up. Now, in order to fully tighten the set screw, you do need to push down on the shaft, and that will allow it to screw in all the way. And then we can go ahead and tighten it up. All right, so now we want to put our distribution valve or brake switch uh, valve together, and we just want to make sure that the sensor is tight. And then in this case on the front, we want to make sure we have the one with the fitting. So we will put in a spring and then these little hats, which fit into the spring like so. And then the copper washer. Just hand tighten this for now. And go ahead and do the other side. This is the side that has the flat bolt. And then we'll go ahead and use the vise and tighten these up. And just to say as well, I did off camera tighten these bolts using the vise. And then finally what we want to do is we want to go ahead and put the reservoirs onto the master cylinder and then connect our lines back to the distribution or the brake switch valve. So we'll go ahead and do that now. All right, so we rebuilt the master cylinder for the Z and went through and tightened up all the nuts and bolts. And one key tip is always use one of these uh, wrenches that has uh, coverage on more sides of the bolt. And these are specially made for those brake lines. And that way you don't go crushing them as you tighten. So definitely get a set of those and also take lots of pictures when you are taking apart those kind of things because you'll get the orientation of the seals and the lines all connected correctly the first try. So thanks so much for watching. If you like what you see, consider subscribing. We're going to definitely be working on our carbs and rebuilding those, so stay tuned for that, but have a good one.